Hello everyone, this is how to do short landings number two. Many people requested more, so here we are. This is a landing with the Cessna 170. Some of the things I want to explain is that first I try to slow down and I usually slow down pulling on the yoke and then I add power at very slow speed and I don't pull on the yoke anymore, just pull again before it touch down. So once I slow down, I'm controlling my altitude with the throttle. So, and that makes it a lot safer. You have to get used to flying with the stall warning and go slow. But if you control the altitude with the throttle, you're not pulling. And if you don't pull, you will not stall the airplane. Some other technique I use is I'm coming with power and the airplane is sinking a bit, but just before touchdown, I add a little more power so there is no sink at all and makes for a very smooth landing, even if I'm, I'm going at a very slow speed. The same technique works for tailwheel airplanes and nose wheel airplanes. So there's no difference. You want to go slow and try to add a little bit of power just before touchdown. This is lower loan in Idaho. Arrowhead in Sky Comic Washington. Pretty short gravel bar for the Cessna 2. You really need to hit the spot on this one because it's short. It is good to be proficient in spot landing. You can practice that at any airport. Just try to land on the spot you choose every time. Correct with power to make it work. Now in some extreme cases like this 700 feet grass strip and there is no go around you must land very slow and hit the spot so slow flight will give you the feel for the airplane and allows you to do better landings shorter landings and not floating on the runway This kind of landing, there is no floating allowed and it's very unforgiving if you come too fast. Absolutely no go around on this earth trip flight. This is a great exercise I like to practice. A slow flight, one feet of the ground, so you also get to feel the ground effect. For a long runway when it's not a busy day and you can fly the whole length of the runway, it will give you a great feel for the airplane at very slow speeds. I think this is the minimum speed the airplane will fly. So in late spring, most of the state airports open. You get invited to fly-ins and or landing trips or we plan trips to Idaho. And if you're not proficient in short field landings, it can become dangerous. Dreams of Fields in Washington. It was a fly-in, kind of a short trip. It fell off the process a bit too fast to do a go around. Another fast approach, they lower the nose, gain speed, bounces, but the paddle makes it. Here is an example of a proficient pilot and how he can do it in a Mooney. Slips in at the right speed. And no problem for him. If you're planning to go to 
flyings mm. or any kind of short field, it is very important to be proficient doing short field landings or else it can be very scary and dangerous. You cannot just go and hope for the best. The technique I use for short field landings on the tailwheel airplane is the same as with the 182. On f only difference is that on the tailwheel airplane when it's, the rocks are too big I try to lift the tail. The two airplanes in the last video that came too fast they were lowering the nose right at the end of the road, so they gained speed. As you will see in these videos, all my approaches are with a nose high and with throttle. The reason you see a nose high approach on my purpose is because I'm managing speed with pitch and altitude with throttle. One very important aspect many times overlooked is the CG. If you want to go to a short field and get the best performance of your airplane, try to load the CG towards the aft position. That way the stall speed is slower. Also the nose of the airplane will feel lighter on the stick or, or on the yoke. But it is important to check with the POH and make sure you are within the CG limits. Here you can see how I'm using the yoke to control the speed and pull it back and I continue with throttle I compensate with throttle to keep the altitude and keep controlling the speed with the yoke and add power just before touchdown so I try to smooth the touchdown this is the same landing looking from the outside you can see my approach and hear the motor, the corrections I do with the throttle. I'm controlling the descent rate and aiming for the touchdown zone with throttle. And I'm keeping the speed slow with the yoke, pitching up, pulling on the yoke a little bit so the nose doesn't come down and then I gain too much speed. The best way to get a feel for the airplane at slow speeds and to practice all of these techniques is by practicing lots of slow flight in all configurations. You put a power setting, you see the RPMs and you make sure that the vertical speed indicator is at zero so it's not climbing or descending and I practice a lot of this and fly a long time this way so I get used to the feeling of the airplane at very slow speeds this exercise will give you a lot more confidence when approaching slow to a short field it takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice Another good exercise is to practice stalls and see how in all configurations. Many pilots never do a stall after they get their private certificate. So if you do that, you will never get to know the airplane well. Here is a 205 doing a short field landing. You can hear the motor is coming with power and then sinks a bit, but then at the end, a little bit more power and smooth landing. Flying in the back country can be unforgiving. For example, this kind of landing in Wilson Bar. You cannot float and land too long because there is no go around and you will end up in the trees. So it is pretty dangerous to go to these places not being proficient with your airplane. Here I'm landing at Cougar Ranch in Idaho and you see the approach, you will see that I'm controlling my speed with the yoke and the descent rate with throttle. I try to slow down the airplane way in advance so 
so I have plenty of time for minor corrections. Also, I like to land with the trim all the way back so the nose feels lighter. This is in the 182. Every plane is different. I know it's more difficult for a go around, but many of these airstrips has no go around anyway. I will show you a view from the outside on the same approach. For example, this is not a super technical or difficult strip, but you cannot get sloppy or come too fast. So you need to be precise all the time. Any of these airstrips has trees at the end or a mountain and no go around, so it can be very unforgiving. Short final, coming real slow. The angle of attack indicator is of great help. And it showed me how much leaf I got. Angle of attack indicator teaches you to fly the wing. You forget about chasing numbers, airspeed indicator and all that. It is a lot more precise. I use the alpha systems angle of attack indicator. I sold so many of these angle of attack indicators, I became a dealer. So if anybody is interested in one, send me an email and I can give you a discount. Outside view, you can see that I touched down at the beginning of the strip, so I have plenty of room left for stopping. I always recommend to aim for the beginning of the strip. What about when it is windy? I do not fly to these places when it's windy. I don't think it's fun and it's pretty dangerous, so I only fly on these places when it's calm winds. If it's Idaho, I go early in the morning, and if it's around Washington, I wait for nice days. I have no problem to go to land to a big airport with wind, but for the back country, in the mountains, and with the big trees, it can get really dangerous. This strip is Bandera in Washington. It has big trees at both ends, but the strip is pretty low. This is another state airport in Washington. This is Skykomish. It has big trees at both ends try to come slow over the trees. If it was windy and I really need to come here, I will come very high and aim for the middle of the strip. If it's very windy, I'll probably be able to stop very short with plenty of room left. Once I pass the trees, I pull power and the sink rate increases. And just before touchdown, I give a little bit of power to rest the sink rate. Here we're landing at the snow-covered airstrip. It feels very smooth when landing in snow. But then coming in slow, three point. Sometimes there is no room for a long final, so you have to make the turn with more speed and then reduce speed and set up for the landing. Here is another example where you have to make a turn at slow speed just before landing. Make sure we make the turn or with the nose down or adding power and not pulling on the yoke so you don't risk any possibility of stalling. In this case you see I'm using both. I'm adding power and also lowering the nose. So it looks like I'm going fast and see how I will slow down the airplane for the landing. This 
is an established approach into Cougar Ranch in Idaho. I'm showing the wing because you will see that it doesn't change much. You will hear the motor. I'm changing power settings, but the wing does not change the attitude. This is why the angle of attack indicator is so great because it teaches you how to fly the wing. It changes your mindset. You're flying the wing and you are constantly thinking about the wing instead of the airspeed indicator when flying. Hope you guys enjoy and if you want to have or discussion or questions please join me on patreon i will be happy to help you and you will be supporting back country 182 youtube channel